Hi, this is Scott with the Sawtooth Avalanche Center with your weekend update for Friday, December 16th, 2022. And just a friendly reminder, this product is not meant to replace checking out the daily avalanche forecast. So make sure you go and get the latest information each day. We issue that by 7 a.m. So we'll take a quick look at what happened over the past week, what's going on right now, and what to expect this weekend and going forward into next week. So brief recap, uh, if you were around, I don't need to tell you that it snowed a lot. If you were around the, in our forecast area over the past week, we had a quite a large storm on Saturday, Sunday, and ended up with anywhere from two to three feet of snow, even on the valley floors, and some of the higher reaches probably approaching four feet of snow. This photo is out, uh, Warm Springs Road, out going out towards Frenchman's, one of the large debris piles that was blocking that road for several days. So recent avalanche activity, and we haven't caught up entering these, but you can see that we're uh, over 160 avalanches, over 170 that we've recorded. It's the real number will probably be twice that when we catch up on our data entry. And there have been a lot of human triggered avalanches, if you see that. So that doesn't include anything at the ski area. So not including the Baldy Ski Patrol doing their mitigation work, but human triggered avalanches, over 10 of them in the past week in the backcountry. The danger ratings. So starting with last Saturday, we issued a warning Saturday night on the 10th and it was high then extreme on Sunday and then continued high. And the last few days has been considerable. So that snowpack has had a difficult time adjusting to that really large load. We had a good week layer coming into that some faceted snow and a little bit of, <clears throat> excuse me, surface ore. And then the weak layer that the previous storm, large storm buried in the end of November, that weak layer is still uh, adjusting to the load too. So we're not out of the woods and things are very, very slowly getting more stable, but nowhere near as quickly as we'd like. So impacts from the avalanche cycle we had last week, three houses were hit in the Wood River Valley. One car was hit and moved and damaged. That was out Warm Springs while it was parked, not while it was driving on the road. So it was hit in its driveway. The Big Wood River was dammed by some avalanches off of Della Mountain and Haley and caused some minor flooding down there. There were extended closures out Warm Springs Road due to large avalanche piles of debris blocking the roadway. And Galena Summit was closed too. There was a one significant avalanche that the plows weren't able to clear and then they couldn't keep up with the snowfall either. So they had to get some heavier equipment in there to open the road. Then we did have one avalanche incident where a skier was injured in the out of bounds terrain outside of Baldy. So from the Warm Springs base area, if you're looking up to the lookers left outside of the boundary in an avalanche path called Scorpion, a skier was injured in a slide there. And this is just looking at some of the flooding <clears throat> down in Haley that when the avalanche blocked the river, it diverted it through a subdivision. So similar to the summertime flooding that that area can encounter. Looking at the danger rating today on Friday for all the zones, it's considerable at all elevations. So we're still seeing very dangerous conditions. The outlook is the same for Saturday, that it's considerable throughout the forecast area at all elevations. And there's a good chance it'll probably stay that way on Sunday as well. One of the interesting things we've seen in this avalanche cycle has been a lot of av unusual avalanche activity with slabs two to three feet deep at the valley floors. So at low elevations, even below 6,000 feet and up to, you know, seven, 8,000 feet too. And this, <clears throat> this activity is in the places right near trailheads where you're getting unloading your snowmobile or putting your skis on. So it's a little bit different than usual where you have to be really thinking avalanche as soon as you step out of the parking lot. Definitely a difference with this avalanche cycle compared to many in previous years. So what are we gonna expect over the weekend and next week? So we're looking at a couple of really nice days of weather Saturday and Sunday with mostly clear to partly cloudy skies, seasonal temperatures in the teens and 20s Fahrenheit. And the wind will be fairly light uh, tomorrow on Saturday, although it's switching west-southwest and will 
kind of gradually increase where Sunday right now looks to be a fairly breezy day. So danger, avalanche danger and problems this weekend. Expect the danger to be steady or slightly decrease. Very slightly, it's probably going to end up staying considerable over the weekend. Um, like I said earlier, the the weak layers that we have are they're not stabilizing or strengthening very quickly. So the snowpack remains unstable and you can trigger avalanches. It'll be a persistent slab problem. Uh, that means you need to expect to have things break either above you or wider than you expect. You'll get snowpack collapsing and you could remotely trigger avalanches. That means triggering avalanches from below, above, or to the sides of steep slopes. So even if you're on flat terrain, way down below a slope, you may be able to trigger something up above you. We may see some fresh thin wind slabs develop on Sunday, and that'll be a, a secondary problem to the persistent slab problem. If anything, it'll just increase the chances of triggering persistent slabs on the freshly wind loaded slopes. So where is it most dangerous? Uh, all elevations, which as I said before, it's kind of unusual where you have really serious um, persistent slab problems at lower and middle elevations. It's not just confined to the Alpine to once you get up high. And especially on the at middle and lower elevations, we're seeing a, a real bias towards avalanches on the northern half of the compass. So avalanche paths facing west through north through east. Um, we've seen a, a the vast majority of the avalanche avalanche activity on those slopes. The snowpack structure is still bad on the south facing and sunnier terrain, but we just haven't seen as much activity. Something's different. Uh, we still get poor scores and stability tests. We don't know if uh, if we're not seeing the, the pattern correctly right now. So we're, we're definitely not saying it's safe on south or southwest or southeast facing slopes, but we've just seen less avalanche activity on those slopes. And here's a radial plot you can Look at this on the website. If you go to view avalanches under the observations tab, and it uh, really shows that pattern that I was speaking to, where the west, northwest, north, northeast, and east aspects are seeing the vast majority of the recent avalanche activity. So, the weather forecast uh, next week, once we get into the work week, it looks like we'll get another good shot of snow, probably not as large as the last storm, but uh, definitely a Decent storm on Tuesday and Wednesday with continued seasonal cool temps. And then a warmer, smaller weather system moves in sometime later in the week. We'll say Thursday night or Friday. So stay tuned for those uh, uh, details on those as we get closer. Next week, the danger and avalanche problems. The danger depends on how much it snows. Um, if anything, you know, we would expect the danger to increase on Tuesday and Wednesday as it starts snowing. I don't know if it'll reach high or not. We'll have to see how big the storm is. And then later in the week, um, we'll have to get a, a better handle on how warm that storm is going to be and whether we are going to see rain on some of the lower elevation snowpacks where there is a lot of snow right now. Expect the persistent slab problem, problem to continue for some time, and we may end up seeing some storm slabs or wind slabs with that next storm on Tuesday and Wednesday. And then we could get some wet issues in the later part of next week. So this is an example of uh, you know what what people are doing to stay safe when they're out skiing and playing in uh, near avalanche terrain. This was up Hindman Creek, and you can see the skin track on the left hand side, and the nice tracks and the powder coming down on a fairly gentle slope that's not an avalanche terrain. And the same thing, those fainter, more faint tracks from a few days previous on the next rib over to the right, where they're they're avoiding the steeper spots in the guts of uh, these drainages where they're avalanches. We don't know if these were remotely triggered by the skiers on either of those uh, two days when people were skiing or if they were natural avalanches. But really right now, the one way to, to for sure stay out of trouble is just to stay out of avalanche terrain. And if you are gonna start uh, entering and dabbling with avalanche terrain, I'd definitely encourage people to don't go to places where there are high consequences if you are caught in an avalanche, such as a terrain trap where you can bury deeply or get pushed into trees or creeks or pushed over rocks or cliffs. 
So check the forecast each day at 7 a.m. Again, this is not a substitute for the daily forecast, and you can sign up to have it emailed to you on the bottom of every page on our website. And please tell us what you're seeing. We've got a ton of great observations that we've received from the public this year. So please keep those coming. It uh, really helps us issue a more precise and more accurate avalanche forecast for everyone. Uh, tons of ways to that you can contribute. On the bottom of every web page, there is a submit observations button. So that's an easy way to do it. And with that, let it snow. Hopefully it keeps coming. <laughs>